Hello and welcome to this episode of the Worship Band Builder Podcast, where we are working with you to lay the foundation for skillful worship. I'm Eric Roberts. I'm joined today by my co-host, my lovely wife, beautiful friend, Emily Roberts. Hello, everyone. And today we are just trying to get through this dreary, rainy day. I thought it was going to be like 75 degrees. I was going to be out there riding my motorcycle, and it is raining. Oh, it's not raining hard, and it is warm, but it is oh. gray. Oh, so are you saying I should go ride my motorcycle? I didn't hear myself say that. Okay, well, I mean, you know, I did yesterday and I realized we live in one of the most beautiful places in the world, probably the world. Um, it's just fall here in Nashville. We're welcoming you into our studio in what I like to say on YouTube, in our beautiful Nashville, Tennessee. I always wanted to live in Nashville and finally we do, and I just keep going back and thinking like, do I live, do I really, did I really do that? Did I really leave the dreary winters of Ohio? Yes, I did. <laughs> we don't have a lot of gray days here. We no. have one today. It seems like though, every time our parents come to visit us, yes. they're like, it's the nastiest, rainiest week. Cause we're always telling so them, like, true. It's, it's so nice here. And then they get here and it's like, yeah, it was nice before you got here. And then today, every time I call them lately, I'm like, oh, it's beautiful here. They're like, well, it's pretty here too. So you know what? Still, Nashville's better than Ohio. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> they both have their pros and cons. The pros and cons, yes. So today we're going to be talking about finding balance, and we're going to be just having a quick chat conversation about balance in ministry, in life, in family, and in work, all of which I have no experience in. So I'm hoping that Emily... <laughs> <laughs> the great psychologist has brought oh, something. Yes, the great psychologist. I'm mostly just opening all my videos now with I'm going to I'm an obsessor and I'm today I'm obsessing on. So that that isn't balance. No, obsession and balance are almost opposites, aren't they? Yeah. So I mean I have a couple things to, to, to say today about balance and I have a couple ideas, especially for you dads out there, you workaholic dads like me. I have some tips, you know, that are going to be kind of good um, for that. But other than that, I mean, balancing does not happen great in my mind. I'm usually on something and I'm on it like obsessively. And and then I just have to go, okay, I got to give that up. I can't let that, I can't let that control my life anymore. I got to go on something else. And then I just get on something else. It's, it's helped, it's helped me get through musical projects. It's helped me get through ministry. Uh, but I have learned as I'm, as I've gotten older, I've kind of obsessed over stuff that doesn't really matter. And maybe I should find some balance. So, Emily, why don't you show us some steps for balance? And I'll give my tips towards the middle. Well, okay. Um, these are not my tips for balance. When I looked up how to balance life on Google, there were 1,790,000,000 million possible responses to that. Wow. One billion? Yes. To find balance? Yes. Which tells me that probably nobody actually knows the answer. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's a, that's a whole lot of attempts at trying to achieve something that I think we all want, um, but is difficult to find. Um, especially when you are involved in church ministry it's hard to prioritize. It's hard to say, well, what's more important? Do I need to be at the church or do I need to be with my family? And I know that a lot of pastors in the past have said ministry is everything and family always comes second mm. and their families have suffered. Who said that? Well, you know, I think that was just kind of a common... Um, God for I've heard like God first, then your wife, then your kids. Like what? What right. I don't understand that. I guess yes. I, I guess I understand that in terms of our heart issues. You know, like okay, God's going to be the first one. But when you're in ministry, I don't think it goes like ministry and then all your family and stuff. I, I actually think ministry comes way below your family once you get married. And Paul even. He did kind of talk about that. He's like, I'm not married, and I can do whatever I want to. I can pretty much minister 100%. But once you get married, then you you are going to have to deal with a wife, a family, kids. You're going to have this other thing. So 
Honestly, I, I think it's all backwards if you're putting ministry above your family. I did that for a while until my wife was like, knock, knock. <laughs> I'm important too. I was like, yeah, but I got this uh, ministry thing. I mean, it's it's my job, number one, and it's my ministry. And she's like, yeah, but I'm your wife, so you're going to have to at least pay some attention to me. So I was like, oh, yeah, it just makes sense. Um, so don't do that. Ministry comes and goes. Your wife, hopefully, is going to stay. So don't I don't run your wife off. Yeah, don't do that. Don't run your wife off for ministry. That would be terrible. Or I can imagine that. Neglect your kids. Yeah. They need you, and they're only going to be there for a little while. Unless you want them to, um, you know, not like you or ministry, because they'll just be like, mm. my dad was always at church. I've seen that kind of go down. There is that danger, and we were just talking about that yesterday. Um, this past Sunday. Our son had to come with us. Uh, we were both involved in both services and even had to be there before the first service. That ain't no balance. So We were there from like 6.30 in the morning till 1 or 12.30. That's a long time for a 7-year-old in our case. Yeah, that um, doesn't happen a lot, but it was just... But it could, because this week I thought about doing it again. I thought about doing it again. And she yes, said and that's that, why we were talking about it. And I said, you know, I would be happy to do that. Um, I had fun doing that. But I do not want to make our son hate coming to church. Yeah. So if we can find some other volunteers to to fill in at least one spot, um, you know, we need to let him enjoy being part of church. Yeah, and the church will figure it out. I mean, you know, our church is really good about that. It doesn't really matter what I say to my uh, leadership team. If I say I can't be there, they're like, okay, we got it, we got it, we're fine. I mean, they never have pressured me to like, you know, oh, but you need to do that one more time. Um, so that's good. That has been Yes, that has they been are good. very understanding. Even when I'm like, I don't know what they're going to do if I don't show up, but I can't show up, and they're like, yeah, yeah, we'll get it, we'll get it. And guess what? <laughs> they they're do. St they're still going. So yeah. it's like you got to be careful not to think in that balancing act that if if you don't do it, it's, it's the end of the world because it isn't the end of the world. So what I have here is from Forbes magazine. It is called Five Simple Steps for Creating Balance in Your Life. So wow. this is just a secular magazine's take on balance. And so I thought it would be fun to just read what they have to say and see if we agree or disagree. Yeah, and at the end, I'll give you my two awesome dad tips for balance with your kids awesome in ministry. Awesome dad tips. Yeah, that's at the Can end. Can moms use those too? Uh, yeah, I mean, they probably, yeah, I mean, yeah, actually they could. Moms could use them, but I think dads will more likely use them uh, because I think so. All right. Okay. What so is it? Give me the first one. The first one is take a break. It mm. says... Take some time off to unwind, relax, and recharge. It could be a couple of hours a day or during the weekends. Switch off your laptops and smartphones and engage. Read a book, meditate, go for a jog, or talk to a loved one. Okay, I'll do that. I mean, I get that. I mean, what? That's what? Wasn't that what the Lord said every week to do? <laughs> I don't know. To well, Obey that's the Sabbath. true. I mean, that, yes, that's a good point. Isn't that, that what the Amish is, do? I mean, that is built in, isn't it? Yeah, and the Amish do it too. But our Sundays, you know, that's again specific to our situation as being a part of the worship team. Is that Sunday doesn't always feel like a day of rest? No, and yesterday was Monday, and I took a day, I pretty much took the day off. I rode my motorcycle. I just goofed around in the garage but but and I'm not a full-time staff I'm on volunteer but I'm I'm pretty much doing ministry and ministry in the, the YouTube channel and I'm just always on so I just needed one day where I'm like I also need to hang up a mirror in the bathroom etc cetera, etc cetera, but yes, I haven't he done does. yet so I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna do those things but I could do that like on Monday so if you're able to take off on Monday if you're if you're bivocational and Sunday is your only day off, this is a problem. You're going to have to find specific times and take off a Saturday and say, this is going to be a different Saturday where I'm just going to rest. I think taking a break. Also, one more thing on taking a break. You should just take a break. You should just tell the pastor, especially if you're bivocational, hey, I'm, mm. you know, fifth Sunday of the month or every sixth week, I'm off. You know, figure it out. 
That, yes. That's what I'm saying. I mean. That's healthy. Yeah. That's if you if you want to do this long term, if you want to continue helping your church, you have to take a break every now and again, or you will get burned out and you will quit. Yeah. Now, a, pod, a podcast or a webinar I did on the YouTube channel just recently, I did it about building multiple teams, and we're doing that through Worship Leadership Foundations. I teach you in that how I was full, listen to this, I was full-time ministry, being paid full-time salary, and I was taking off every fourth Sunday. Just I was still going to church, but I wasn't on stage. And I teach you how to do that, how to build a strong team, build a rotating team. And there is a way around it. And, and if you're not able to do that or think how that could happen, join me in the Worship Leadership Foundations because it can really change your life if you could take off every sixth Sunday from the stage. You really need to do that. And I show you how I how I build my team rotation schedule to make that happen. And I share my personal story, too, about how I did that so well. They were like, well, we have to lay somebody <laughs> off during the 2008 financial crisis. They said, well, we'll just lay him off. I mean, he's got this whole thing going anyway. He doesn't even have to be here anymore. So that was I shared that story. It's kind of funny. But that, so do take some time off. Yes. Don't work yourself out of a job, but take some time off. You could do either one. It doesn't matter. I thought it was good that they said turn off your phone. Yeah. I don't like to do that. But. I know you don't. But I think that it's significant to give yourself some brain space, um, you know, so that you... You have some clear time to let your brain process things that are not just being interjected by your phone. Yeah, I mean, so for, for sure, social media, news. Right now, we're in election. We're, we're still in election cycle. And, you know, it's just, it's just constantly pulling you. But that's how life is. It's going to constantly pull you. So I think turning off your phone going on a motorcycle ride. I realized why I like it because I can just, I'm going nowhere. I'm just breathing fresh air. I can't look at my phone. I can't think about anything. I have no possible reason to be doing it. And it's just beautiful. And I think that's, you got to find something you can do that golfing, which I don't golf, but you could do any, anything like that, but something you can blow off the, blow the cobwebs out of your brain. And for me, it's riding a motorcycle or riding the bike or going to the gym, turn off your phone, is a great one. What else? What do we got? All right. Avoid negativity, it says. Adopting a positive mindset and staying away from negative influences is essential for inner peace and happiness. Stay away from toxic people as much as possible. Practice gratitude. Avoid self-criticism. And do at least one thing every day that makes you happy. Okay. That's a lot so, of things. That was Let's a lot. Just... Of, they threw a lot of stuff in there, but the the... Caption was avoid negativity. avoid negativity. Well, that's good. And Emily has a gratitude journal. I don't have one. I'm thinking I need one, though, because I'm getting very, not to just be totally personal, I'm getting very mad right now. I've got multiple personal issues, multiple friendship issues, uh, lots of stuff going on at church. The church's stuff isn't making me mad, but it's causing me to think about a lot of stuff, a lot of plug-ins. But then the personal stuff, the family stuff, Extended family, politics, all of that is making me mad. And a lot of it's just mm. negativity. I'm starting to get frustrated, like overall. So yes. I need to avoid some negativity. I need to get some of that stuff, negativity, out of my brain. I don't know how to do it. Like I said, this, this episode is hard because how do you find balance and how do you get rid of negativity? I think I'm going to have to start a gratitude journal because I just need... Good news. I need more good news. And I've got plenty of good news. Yes, that's true. There, there are often so many good things in our life that we just let roll right past us. And we don't even see the good things that we have because of all the negative things clouding our view. Uh, the gratitude journal is so therapeutic and it is so healing as far as that goes because you sit down and you start writing down all the things that are good today and honestly when I started doing a gratitude journal I thought I'm going to come up with about 10 things and that's going to be the end of my gratitude journal because once you say thank you for a roof over my head and food on the table and a hot shower and my family and our health okay 
I, I don't know what else to say, but I do. There is so much more. When you sit down and start writing about it, you realize there are a million little things every day. You know, a hug from your kid or, a, you know, just a kind word from your husband or wife. Or it might be a sunny day or a, a tree whose leaves have turned a beautiful color. They're just innumerable things that you will just almost miss, not even realize they're there if you don't take a minute and look at them. Philippians talks about thinking on the good things. If anything is excellent, if anything is worthy of praise, think on those things. Yeah, that's good. And then let's move on. Learn to prioritize. Create a balance that isn't about cramming in as many things as you can in everyday life. Why not? It's about examining (laughs) what's important and what isn't. So prioritizing and evaluating how much time and energy you should invest in things that matter to you. So, yeah, don't answer email while you're at a family dinner. Uh, Don't buy a fancy fragrance. More important than... (laughs) What is buying that fancy fragrance? Whoa, I don't know. More important (laughs) than saving money for a down payment on your dream home. Now, I don't know because I despise fragrances. So, no, it's not. That's not applicable to you then. And uh, assess your priorities regularly to stay focused, effectively managing your time and to prevent burnout. So, I think that's basically just... What is important? A lot, a lot. That's the biggest problem I have, is uh, with some people that I know is just prioritizing. If you get your focus on the wrong thing, people come to me with their problems, and I'm like, it's so easy to see somebody else's problem and go, well, what, you, what about this? This is this is not even a problem. You should just look at this. Um, mm. Of course, that's because I'm a fixer. Uh, curse. I have that curse, <laughs> and so I just like to, you know, I like to look at problems and I see the big picture. Uh, a lot of people I know will see the small details and get so messed up into that and lose the big picture. And so I think you just need to prioritize what's important to you, your family. The best thing I can say about this is today. I was watching my son jump in the leaves, you know, and he Aww, is like, yeah. you know, you have to. Just look at that and be like, okay, what else is more important than... I had already raked the leaves into the street. I was ready for him to be gone. But he kept wanting a pile of leaves. And I and I was... he So he went to the backyard and started raking up the leaves. And he got these little puny little piles. And he's like, I don't know how you get the big piles. <laughs> so today, this morning, I, I pulled the leaves back into the yard and made a big pile. And we just... And he still just uh, was jumping in the leaves. And that's, that's what he wanted. And, you know, that... Um, is good to prioritize the good stuff up top. What's really important? That's 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 important to do because uh, you know I'm sorry to say worship leaders and pastors, church isn't that important. Uh, I'm sorry over your family, your kids, it's really not that important. Somebody's yelling at you, somebody's picking on you, somebody's messing with you. All my life, I've been striving for stuff, and then I look at my seven year old and go, you know what? None of that's that important. This is important. God's given you a, uh, and if you don't have kids, you can look at your your fa- other things. You know, it can't just be work. So why don't you do the next one? Because that's good. Okay. Well, and this is this is a hard one for me. I don't <laughs> I don't know if I totally agree with this, but it okay, says let's try it. Pamper mm-hmm. yourself. Occasionally, spend some time to hashtag treat yourself can do wonders for your mood, mental health, and self esteem. Once in a while, set aside some time just for yourself. Schedule a spa visit, go shopping for fun, or eat at your favorite restaurant. And if you want to unwind without making a dent in your bank account, listen to some music, take a long bubble bath, or just sleep in. Well, I know why Emily doesn't understand that one. (laughs) Because she doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have to tell her, like, just chill. Just go get a cup of coffee at the coffee shop and just sit there. Because that's what I do. I don't, you know, after I'm done working or I'm in meetings all day, I don't come, I won't come home. I'll go get like a big iced latte and I'll just sit there until it's my phone It's hard for me going. to enjoy stuff like that though, because I always feel like I should be doing something else. Yeah. She, this is bad for you. You need to do more of this, you know, like you just need to, yeah. I mean, go do some fun stuff. It's, I think it's hard for you to have fun doing it because like, yeah, you just feel guilty about doing something fun. Like 
Is that right? You feel guilt like I'm doing something well, fun. I should probably be doing something else. Yeah, something that's more constructive, something that's a better use of my time. And I don't know, honestly, that I can find any biblical support for pampering yourself. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that. I mean, yeah. So that's a hard one. I don't know. Leave leave us a comment if you're watching this on our YouTube channel or on Facebook this week. Le- leave a comment if you're on the podcast. Jump over on onto our YouTube channel, Worship Band Builder. I don't know. You have to take care of your own mental health, though. And I think if you know if you go get a cup of coffee and you sit there and you're quietly at peace, because even a mom, it's like sometimes I come, I'm I'm like, you know what? You just need to go, go somewhere and do something else other than what this what you're doing here. <laughs> and she's she'll just be like, well, what? Like I can, I can, that's possible. Like, yeah, just go, go do something else, you know, and then it's, it's hard when you're focused so much on your kids or just cleaning or doing laundry or whatever you're doing, uh, to even do anything. I don't, I don't have that problem. I always do that. I always, I'm looking for any moment that I can just get out (laughs) of any responsibility to go like eat chocolate. True. And spend money. (laughs) Also true. All right. So a couple things here. Uh, this is my journal. If you're watching online, um, on YouTube, you can see this. If you're listening to the podcast, it is a ink and vault, I believe, journal. It's not a journal. It's basically like a life. Uh, I don't. What do you want to call? It? What do you call this? A planner? Is this what what they would call in the '90s a planner? Ink and vault planner, and it's basically a daily planner. And uh, when you're talking about finding balance, this is more like a work balance thing. But I actually plan my whole week based on work and and fun stuff. And I like to look at my calendars it has different views. So this is a practical way to um, get balance because you can look out months in advance, plan every day in advance. And I'm not a big planner, but I get so much going on. If I write it all down, then I can I can chill. I can do stuff because I'm like, yeah, I got my planner. I know I got stuff in there. It gets it out of my head on the paper. Does that make sense to you? Yes. So it's ink, probably the only time he writes anything on paper. Yeah, it's the only thing, I, and I don't like paper that much, but I like this, and I'll carry it with me if I go to boring meetings or if <laughs> I go somewhere. I take it with me, and I can doodle, whatever. I can keep my active mind going while I'm with other people, and I can also let my mind go when I just I write down my to do list. I'm like, close that up, and I can do that later. Uh, and that brings me to my second tip, which is Daddy Day. Did you know I was going to oh, say that? Oh, I did not know you were going that direction. Okay. No, and this happens in my planner because Daddy Day was Thursday, and it usually and it is Thursday. It's kind of been slipping around here lately, but um, since we moved to Nashville. But for all of those first five years of Augie's life, Thursday was Daddy Day, and it was just no work. I was I took Thursday off every week, and I just was like, that's it. And we planned some stuff: museums, Air Force Museum. We just did stuff. Or we just did nothing and we just goofed around. But it was like it was like a midweek vacation for me. Also, it was the only thing that kept my perspective because I just shut everything off, mostly. I would save my errands for that day, though. You know, like, hey, we're, we need this stuff. I'd just write that on my list and, you know, drop the bank deposit off, pay the mortgage, whatever little stuff. I would take him in public. Coffee, pizza, Earl's yes. Pizza. Yes. We had a lot of little things that we did that were important and it kept it really is the only thing that I can think of that has really kept balancing me as a father is going you know this day it's not going to matter my work will be there on Friday and it's hard to take off a whole day and it, and, it, and it was a sacrifice and it is still sometimes a sacrifice I don't know we, we don't have daddy days every day this now we have not done them a lot this yeah, year, well, really. he's in he's in school now, and uh, coronavirus is sort of locking everybody down. It's hard to go anywhere. Mm-hmm. You know, we've been doing daddy days in little chunks through the week, and I'll just be like, hey, maybe we'll have a morning where we just hang out till noon, and that that's daddy morning. But the point is, if there's a possible way for you as a father, because you're, if you're a mom, you're probably with your kids a lot anyway. But same same with that, you could take a daughter's day or daddy day, make it specifically something you do, maybe every week, maybe. Uh, just have something in place. So uh, that is my big tip for balance. Well, probably for most people, it would be more practical to do it the way that Eric has been doing it more recently here, which is just finding a few hours here or there. So 
Yeah, intentionally, like just, you know, know, tomorrow morning we're going to go. If you can come home from work an hour early and take your child or children uh, just for a couple of hours, whether it's to a park or whether it's to a coffee shop or wherever you like to go, um, that can help you connect with your kids again. It gives your wife some time to... um, think her own thoughts and um it it has been good for us yeah and it i don't think i would have it's the only thing honestly that slowed me down um because i'll keep going i i run several companies several websites several youtube channels you know i'm like my brain is on top i like i'm on you know i'm not shutting off but thursday it was hard sometimes for me just to shut off, but it, it was a disciplined thing. Really, when he was young and really cute, it wasn't that hard. I was just like, <laughs> I was like, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go do this. But it was it was hard. He's just, still really cute. Well, you know, as they get older, they get a little stinky. <laughs> anyway, he is still really cute. He's uh, and and it's harder. I have really not been great at balancing lately. Lately, I've been a little more you know busy and a lot more focused. And sometimes I go do stuff and I just bring him with me, and then he just sits there and plays his video game while I'm working or something. So I'm going to work better at that. You guys can uh, evaluate. Just like this last couple weeks, I've been evaluating all of our expenses in my company and going, I don't really need this. I need to prioritize what we're doing. Uh, It's just continually getting a little bit better. So this podcast is over. (laughs) It's now your turn to get better and to go think, what can I do? just to have more balance, even one of these things can really change. Um, and so hopefully those helped you. Do you have any last, you have any last words? I don't think so. I think this was a good chat. Yeah. All right. So thank you for watching. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, make sure that if you loved this, just put a thumbs up, put a share that really helps us. It even cuts down on all of our advertising costs, which helps us immensely because uh, online marketing is expensive. So you are now enrolled in our online marketing program by hitting the share button. <laughs> also, if you really, really want to know something new, we have a new affiliate program out, worshipthekingcom slash affiliate. And with that, you can share links and earn up to 50% off any products that are sold on our website, which I think is an amazing opportunity. So if you stayed this long and you really are thinking, hmm, I would love to just share these products, share this stuff, and actually be able to create an, a lasting income because our affiliate program, Emily, our affiliate program is about a 90 day cookie and it means that it's a lifetime customer too so once they buy something through your link anything else they purchase if they're a monthly member you will get a reoccurring revenue for that person's monthly membership which is fantastic we'll see you over there at worshipthekingcom slash affiliate god bless you guys